Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to the Aspect of the Week video. Here, I'm going to take a look at a really significant astrological event happening the last week of May, the week starting May 24th. And that, of course, is the lunar full moon eclipse in the sign of Sagittarius. So this lunar eclipse, I guess it's technically not an aspect, it's more accurately described as a lunation, uh, but it is an eclipse. It's a huge event astrologically. And so let's talk about what it means. So first up, some of the technical info. The lunar eclipse, full moon eclipse in Sagittarius happening at five degrees Sagittarius, and it is happening on Wednesday, May 26th. Now, what I do want to say is even though the eclipse is happening on May 26, it's going to take the moon almost 48 hours to move through the entire sign of Sagittarius after the full moon or after the eclipse. So the peak of the eclipse energy and activation is happening on Wednesday, the 26th, but it's quite likely that you're going to feel some of that unsettled kind of chaotic eclipse energy for about 48 hours after the eclipse until the moon leaves the sign of Sagittarius. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're interested in videos like these about the astrology of the week, do pop over to my website, kellysastrology.com and join my monthly astrology subscription where I provide video info and insights about every aspect happening each day and each week. So back to the full moon eclipse. Now, this eclipse is what I would describe as a south node eclipse, which means the moon is near the south node at the time of the eclipse. Let's give a very quick eclipse definition. We have a new or a full moon every two weeks, but we only have eclipses about every six months. The reason for that is that a new or a full moon only becomes an eclipse when the new or full moon is near the north or south node in the chart or in astrology, in the astrological model. So the an eclipse is a special kind of new or full moon that breaks the regular pattern. So there are ways we can just look at a chart. And if the new moon, the sun and the moon are both within about 18 degrees of the nodal axis, the north and south node, that's going to clue us in to that being a, an eclipse chart rather than just a regular new moon or full moon chart. The definition of any lunation, including eclipses, in terms of the sign definition and which part of the nodal axis becomes important, is always to do with where the moon is at the time of the eclipse. So this eclipse is happening with the moon in Sagittarius and the sun in Gemini. The sun will be near the north node, but it's the moon's proximity to the south node that is really going to flavor the energy of this eclipse. So there's two things we need to run through. One, that it's what we call a south node eclipse and also that it's ruled by the planet Jupiter. Now, remembering that Jupiter has only just a couple of weeks ago changed signs uh, moving into Pisces, there's a quality of trying to connect with a new feeling that you want your future to be full of, or a new vision or dream for where you're headed. And that's the rulership of Jupiter and Pisces over this eclipse. It's a little bit protective that the ruler of the eclipse is a benefic planet like Jupiter in one of its home signs, but it is still an eclipse. And in an eclipse, one, one of the light giving sources, the sun or the moon is blocked temporarily. And light is associated with life. And when light is blocked in the eclipse uh, sort of approach or theories, when some of that light is blocked, we get sort of an anti-life kind of quality. Now, that's not to say eclipses are literally about death, but it's the reason why eclipses are not good new or full moons for magical purposes, especially when your intentions are about accumulation, growth, or progress. So to the ancients, not just ancient astrologers, but to ancient peoples, eclipses were something to take caution around and maybe kind of let your body, your spirit, your schedule go really quiet around the eclipse in the same way that nature, like the birds get quiet, the animals kind of all scurry into their safe places. And we humans, being a type of animal, kind of need to let our body and our spirit have a rest. It can be appropriate to do gentle cleansing, but spiritual practices like meditations or mantra practices can be helpful ways to try and support yourself energetically uh, and emotionally during eclipse times. 
So because an eclipse is the break in the usual pattern of things, they have this chaotic quality where normal rhythms and routines are disrupted or upended or just interrupted for a day or a week or a month. So that's something to keep in mind uh, midweek and maybe into, you know, I think we could safely say Wednesday, Thursday for eclipse effects because the moon will be moving through Sag on Thursday as well. So the South Node, what do we need to say about that? So I do work with the South Node differently from the modern kind of evolutionary astrology way. And a lot of my understanding of the South Node comes from the Indian traditions in astrology. And so in that model, Rahu, the North Node, and Ketu, the South Node, represent a dragon that's kind of cut in the middle. There's a whole mythological story that goes with this. So I just want to give you the highlights in terms of getting as quickly as possible to the keywords. And so if the cut in the middle and Rahu is the, the top half of the dragon or imagine like a, an animal type creature from the belly up is the North Node and from the belly down is the South Node. Now, just think about what the bottom half of your body does. It's about releasing things or passing things through you or letting go of things, Uh, you know, not to get too granular and nitty gritty, but the lower part of our body tends to have releasing sort of functions. And so when we think of the South Node, we want to think of releasing or emptying out. You want to think about letting go of things that have served their purpose, that are no longer useful and maybe getting rid of stuff that might otherwise become toxic or contribute to congestion and stagnation. A very modern word that I think kind of gets to what the South Node is about is this idea of decluttering, where you're just streamlining and emptying out your space. Uh, And so with an eclipse, which is already a chaotic kind of thing, on the South Node, which we might summarize to say it's about endings, it's about release, it's about letting go, this eclipse on the South Node is a very dramatic turning point event about coming to the end of something or finally letting go of something that maybe you've been holding on to for a long time. Think about the topics of the Sagittarius house in your birth chart. And think about how you are ready to drop an old pattern, ditch a bad habit, or physically declutter and clear out a space in your home or your work environment that might be connected to that. For instance, if the Sag Eclipse on the South Node is in the second house of money for you, there might be a part of your space where you keep bills or documents or financial stuff that you want to organize and clear out. Sometimes we have to separate ourselves from people that are problematic in our lives. So if this eclipse is in maybe the 11th house of friendships, that could be a clue that it's time to put some healthy space between you and a social situation or an organization that is more depleting than anything. Now, even though this eclipse is happening May 26 in Sagittarius, the South Node has been traveling through Sagittarius and this part of your chart since May of 2020. So you've had about 12 months and we've already had some eclipses near this South Node in Sag. So you're already hopefully well into the process of decluttering, streamlining and offloading or ending things around the topics of your Sagittarius house. And this full moon or lunar eclipse can bring things to a peak. It might represent a really significant ending or you kind of just stopping trying to hold on to something that you know is to your detriment. Now, in the Indian tradition with this South Node piece, there's also a connection from the South Node to the idea of spiritualizing or spiritualization. And so the South Node can shift our perspective off material things, off accumulation, off worldly ambition, and onto some of those more uh, maybe existential or fulfilling things that may have no great application in the world at large. Other than that, we feel that we're in the right place doing the right thing when we're doing them. It's a little bit like the Buddhist idea of non-attachment to a certain degree. It's not a complete correlation, but these are things that'll get you close to understanding the kind of genuine intention, uh, kind of spiritual vibe that the South Node can bring. And so you might also think about that, that this eclipse is highlighting 
a really important and profound change in perspective and priority where you're trying to make more space for activities, people, and priorities that fulfill you or that really feel like you're living your spiritual truth when you're doing them. Now, these might be things that don't pay you very well or take a lot of your time or nobody else knows about, but you do them because you're either making a positive contribution or it feeds that deeper ache for divine connection inside you. So shifting to make space for those types of things is something that may be part of the pivot that you're doing around this lunar eclipse. So there's some pretty big concepts and ideas here. I'd love to hear how this uh, South Node in Sag eclipse is stirring up your chart. What part of your chart is it in? What house? Can you see that idea of endings, completion, closure, and letting go playing out around the topics of the Sagittarius part of your chart? Maybe you have a planet around five degrees of Sagittarius. So four, five, six degrees of Sag, they're going to be hit very directly and very strongly by this eclipse. And that might make um, an ending that you're going through really significant, but also at the same time, very freeing. Because when we let go of things that have been in our lives for a long time, we kind of lighten our load and our energy. And we, because it's Sagittarius, dropping things that have maybe become heavy or anchoring or restrictive gives us more room to roam. It gives us space to travel and adventure and explore and discover. So it's not all bad, even though the eclipse itself is kind of letting us know we need to do some ending stuff. But I think combine that South Node energy with the fact that the eclipse ruler is Jupiter and Pisces, there is this real sense of we have to ditch the old or out with the old before we can welcome in the new. And with Jupiter and Pisces, there's some great new stuff to bring in, but we don't have space for it if we're still full of old stuff. In the same way, if you think about eating food and passing it through you, that we need to have some digestion and eliminating time to get the last meal out of us before we can take in the next meal. So this is part of why the eclipse is such an intense time of processing and releasing on the South Node. But I think it's totally worth it knowing that the gift kind of just around the corner is that lovely uh, moon, sorry, (laughs) Jupiter in Pisces. I'm thinking about the moon moving towards Jupiter, which will happen about a week after the eclipse itself, which will also be a significant time. Okay, so that's lots of food for thought, lots for you to chew over in regards to this lunar eclipse. Definitely let me know in the comments below how this is showing up for you. Um, Also let me know what kinds of uh, self-care things you're going to do for yourself around the eclipse. Do you have a meditation or a mantra practice that you like during the eclipse? Maybe you're going to take a salt bath. Maybe you're going to have a quiet day away from your usual schedule. Remember that eclipses are about disrupting or changing regular patterns. So are you uh, open to doing that consciously and preparing in advance, or are you just going to wait and see what happens? I'm always curious to hear how people respond to this. As I mentioned earlier, if you are interested in video content like this about all the astrology aspects and action happening each week, pop over to my website, kellysastrology.com, where you can sign up for my monthly membership. And if you sign up in the next few days, you will be registered in enough time to join us for our live members Q&A, which is happening in early June. All right, team, take good care of yourselves through this eclipse, and I'll talk to you soon. 